Welcome to The Raw Experience with Chris, where honesty is at the forefront of every video. What's going on? Welcome back. Today, we've got another series of Orca Slicer and the new Orca Slicer 2.3. They have dropped something pretty special that not much has been talked about. And that's the new fuzzy skin variants with four new skin layer styles. I've been tweaking, I've printed 40 test cubes with every single increment printed so we can go through it together and you can match the styles, whether it's a skin profile, whether it's an organic profile, whether it's a structural profile, we can get new settings for new layer textures. Stay tuned, stick around, we'll go through it together right now. GTEC have supported this video by providing you with the filaments for today's testing and the video content that I'm producing today. Not only do they come packaged well, they also include a Ziploc bag that you can throw a dry satchel in, keep the filaments dry, and not only that, but they also print absolutely great. You can see this silk, red and gold Xi'an Warrior, absolutely flawless. The filaments that I've done today that we'll be utilizing to testing, all done with GTEC filaments. Not only are they fantastic filaments to use, they're also probably the most budget, more affordable filaments to purchase with warehouses in USA and Australia at 10 to $15 less than your normal supplier. Check out the link below for the sales on GTEC filament and thank you again for sponsoring this video. All right, all right, welcome back. So here we are, we'll run through the Orca Slicer 2.3, the fuzzy skin with the one setting that you need to change that's gonna give you the features that we showcased before. So here we are, we've just selected a standard profile. Doesn't matter what printer you use, what you have is what you have. So what we're gonna to do to start off with, just select one of your standard profiles Obviously it will vary, you know, based on what profile you have, but that's okay. We're just here to search through the uh, features and the settings for fuzzy skin, uh, the new four included variances that you can play around with. So to start off with, we're just gonna add a primitive cube and to give us some options on how I showcase those cubes before so you can see the differences and then you can judge for yourself once you see them uh, on the actual slicer themselves, then you can apply them directly to a model that you feel that would look nice. Obviously before I showcase the Scorpion that I printed before, a close up of that, and I applied the Veroni skin to that and that came out absolutely fabulous. Uh, absolutely fabulous. Uh, so yeah, really nice. And as you can see, it didn't affect the flexi print side of it with the interlinking chain link, so that's fine. So back to the cube, we've added a printed cube. You can add, you know, um, any type of, you know, model design cube you want for your testing. This is just for a visual standpoint. So what we'll do is we'll come down and we'll go to the other section and we're gonna look at the fuzzy skin. Now you've got contour, contour and hole and all walls. For this case, I'm gonna select all walls. Uh, the difference in that is that the contour will basically apply the fuzzy skin to the outer layers of the outer section of walls that don't have any cutout slots or insertions. Uh, if you do, the contour and hole, obviously that's gonna apply that to the outer layer, flat or outer curved flat full surface layers and any inserted holes uh, that it's gonna have. And if you choose all walls, it's gonna to apply to every inert, cut out, extruded, and I suppose uh, angled and protruded component. It'll apply it to all those layers itself. So we're gonna choose all walls, obviously to start off with, we only had previously classic. Uh, now we have the option of pearl and below rigid multifractural Veroni. So what we're gonna do to start off is so we can view the differences and how it applies, is we're just gonna right click and we're gonna hit clone. And for this purpose, I'm just gonna choose nine. So that gives me 10 cubes in total. Boom, there it is laid out exactly as I want it. Now to change the variances, all we're gonna do is we're gonna go, for instance, to start off with, I might choose Veroni, because it's one of my favorites to start off with. And the only setting we're going to change is a skin feature size. Now, so that we can see the variances, so that we can see it from the absolute smallest positioning you can get where the skin, the fuzzy skin is as compact as possible before we uh, basically magnify it and spread it out to open the, the skin feature up so we can see the actual full design un like under a magnifying glass, but spread out across the actual model itself. We're gonna point that as 0.05, okay? And that's gonna to apply to that one. Now, to get the differences to apply to each individual model, say for instance, you had uh, a particular model that was in different components uh, or a model that had different body parts or features, 
Same goes with different constructive parts of a helmet or a sword or any item you're trying to print to put together in different components. You just go to objects at the top here, up here, and as we select each one, we can change and it will automatically apply that to each variant. So what we're going to do to start off with, the first few, is just going to increase it in 0.5 intervals. And that way we can get an idea of the, the changes that it makes to the slight increments in 0.5 from the density. And then we'll open it right up into singular numbers. So as you can see, we would click back. It's 0.5, 1, 1.5, and 2 as we change the skin feature size down here to the left-hand side. Now what we'll do to make it so you can really open it up and really zoom in and open up that type of fuzzy skin to really see what that skin's all about is we're going to open it right up now and we're going to jump in singulars. We'll go three and then we'll go four on this one and five on that one. And then this one we're going to jump even higher again. Let's go seven and then we'll go uh, let's go 9, and we'll go 11 on this one, maybe 10. If we open it up too much, you dissipate the actual skin feature, and it almost becomes a flat surface. So, uh, All right, now, basically, all you do from there is we don't want a brim because, I mean, it's up to you we want a brim, but we're just going to get rid of the brim just so we can see clearly the actual objects we want. Now we're just going to hit slice. Obviously, with your seams as well, if you want it to look cleaner, then you can apply the uh, scarf seam. If that's something you want to do, which I've applied here, and um, we'll hit slice. And what this is going to do is it's going to showcase what the actual skin feature does and how it's affected our model. So as you can see here, this is the Veroni, which is one of my favorites. Uh, for me, it, it showcases the difference. It looks like a, a real raw, uh, somewhat, you know, digitalized, mechanical, stone, urban look. Really good for like, uh, if you're doing um, mechanical parts, as you can see, when it really opens up, you can see, you get a nice angle here. You can see it gives you that almost urban military look, or you could even say a slate look, you know, depends on how you look at it. Um, you've got, as it comes in, it becomes more of a, a 2D, three-dimensional camouflage look, if you look at it from that perspective. And then obviously, as it comes in closer, the more you can see it separates in certain areas. So. Keep that in mind as well. Um, you can actually change, as we look through here, you can see where the lines and how it's working. It's coming in in a very uniform straight line aspect with mostly targeting on straight edges and corners. Uh, and you'll get different variances on the actually different types of skins that you apply, whether it's the pearl or uh, fuzzy billow. They've all got their unique pattern and you really see what that pattern is when you open it up, like I have here. So you've got your 0.5 at the front there, which is the most densest. Now, mind you, we've only changed one simple setting, and all we've done is just change the, the skin feature size, uh, which is basically just here. Start off at 0.5, and then we've increased all the way to 0.10. I actually did a drone uh, for a client who, who had a bad wreck with his uh, Typhoon drone. It was too expensive to get replaced with parts. He approached me and said, could you do something with it? Uh, happy to do uh, have free run of the design and the fit and what you know any textures you want to apply. So I was pretty happy with that. Gave me opportunity to try out this new feature, and I actually chose this skin feature. And I went pretty sure I'll show it on screen now. I'll put a pin image up right about here. And I think I went with uh, the 0.7. I think I went with sorry not 0.7 7. I went with the 7 on the uh, skin feature size. As you can see, when you click back into it, it will should show you when you go back to objects. It'll show us what one it is, and yet yeah, seven there is there. So as you click, you can see you can go back and reference. So if you decide, so what we can do, for instance, is we can even once you've done that setup, if you wanted to see what it looked like on say something uh, cylindrical, you could come over here once again, choose this plate here, and we can add a primitive cube again. So I'll just click here. Let's add a primitive, or we could add a sphere. So we've got a cylindrical circle here. And then we can clone that and let's just say, for instance, let's do, we'll do, we'll do 10 anyway. All right. So we've got a similar process to what we had before. And what we can do now, <clears throat> excuse me, is we can go into say rigid multifractional and we've got 0.5 at the start. We'll just change. Now we'll go from left to right and we'll change this one and we'll change the skin feature size to one, just like we did before. And this time we'll go up by just singular numbers. 
So 2.0, and then we'll go three. So skin feature size again, grow, and then four on this one. So it's just a process of just entering them in one by one. And then you can, once you've done it a few times, you get a, a pretty good idea of what you want from each type of fuzzy skin. And like I said, this is only changing the skin feature size. This isn't changing the actual uh, style of, of the actual uh, pattern as far as the octave noise and, and so on. They, some would say they use, which increases the actual vibration of, and that can dictate how much uh, extrusion you get between the layers as well. So I'll just double check what that was. That was six, and we'll just jump to seven on this one. So this one's a little bit more in smaller increments. And like I said before, you've got 0.5, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll go slice now, slice that one. And this is gonna show us something different again. And there we are there. So now, if you look at it from a different perspective, this almost looks like, I suppose, uh, in a different context, a map of the world or a, a globe of sorts. Uh, obviously not related to the, the countries and nations of our world, but it gives you some something as a perspective to look on. Now, we can quickly just save that right there it is, and we can go Perlin and slice that again and get a different perspective again just by clicking one button, and we need to change that across the, all the balls, so it's only changing the one, which is my bad. So we'll just change that. As you can see, you have to make sure, I've made a mistake there, you have to make sure that you do click out of glo uh, objects and back into global, and when you change Perlin, it will apply to all of the objects. Now, if we go back into objects, it should, by rights, I know it's changing. So we need to make sure that we're actually changing it to Perlin, make sure they're all changed. So yeah, that's one thing to keep in consideration. Make sure that if you are switching between the styles, uh, that you select on the first one, that you change back to global. When it's in the full global standard settings, it will apply the fuzzy skin feature style to all of the point models you have or components on the actual slice board or your print uh, sheet. Uh, whereas if you go to object, it'll do one at a time. So that's that there. So I've just made that change to Perlin. So now if we slice that, that should all be in Perlin, different increments. And there you go there. So that gives you a different perspective once again. So now from a different perspective, we're almost looking like a marble. Like for instance, this one here, I would say, oh, maybe not that one, but possibly a couple of them almost look like golf balls in a sense. Uh, this one here looks really cool. I like that. That reminds me of Jupiter uh, for some reason, but you can see the different textures you get uh, with a cylindrical versus a square or flat surface print. Really does uh, change the way it does uh, give apply the layer of that texture to that shape. So that's something to consider. Now what we'll do now is just to show you a, one more reference point is I've got a little reptile flexi lizard down here and I'm going to use the same thing again but this time I'm going to go into Perlin. I'm going to choose Billow and I'm going to choose let's go for around let's go three. So we'll apply three and that's just going to give us a nice dense texture and what we're looking for is a reptile type skin and we'll see how we go with that. I think these new features with these fuzzy skin are really cool. Um, like I said, you know, it's good to be able to explain it so that everyone can get a point of view on it and utilize it to its fullest. And as you can see there, obviously by decreasing the layer height, we can somewhat mitigate those layer lines on top. We can obviously change that to, uh, you know, concentric Archimedean chords. We can also change the quality. We can bring that down to 12. Obviously that's going to dictate the type of speed you're going to get out of your print. Fuzzy skin does increase the layer print time obviously as well as the layer height as well, we'll dictate that as well. So that's something to keep in mind. But obviously when you're doing fuzzy skin, you know, you're not really too concerned because you're looking for the detail. Now, as you can see there, that's really given it a really good texture. Uh, now you can, like I said, you can change that. So you can go back to the fuzzy skin side of it and we can change it to contour only. And that way, any flat surfaces, it's not going to apply it to. So we can also play around with that again and we can open it up. We can press two, we can bring it, make it more dense. Really as simple as just clicking one button and changing a setting. That's starting to really look like reptile skin. Uh, if we fade that out to the filament, you can see there, it's really starting to show that ripple effect of that reptile skin. Uh, so yeah, that's just some of the advantages you can get uh, with playing with fuzzy skin. You know, it's really is endless what you can do. Uh, 
changing it again the rigid multifractional you know and it's just endless i mean there are other settings you can change but clearly as you can see with just one setting of changing your skin feature size that really makes a big difference and once again that's a diff that's rigid multifractional now some of them do look very similar when they're at their lowest skin feature size and that's why i made this video because i realized once you zoomed in it's like putting it under a magnifying glass and opening it up it really enables you to really make the most of the fuzzy skin feature and really get the best and the fullest out of the actual feature in the slicer software and apply it to your models directly and i thought that was something that really needed to be showcased so once again that's uh fuzzy skin in orca 2.3 I will have the Orca 2.3 uh, official version you can get from GitHub. I'll have the link in the description below. If you've got anything you want to add, uh, anything you'd like to see on the channel, uh, I've been away for a bit, but uh, we're back and running. Uh, I'm trying to post videos uh, probably fortnightly. I'll try try for weekly. I've got a few other projects on the go. I've got some laser stuff coming, so that's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks as well. I'm getting into the laser side of things and cross-referencing that with 3D printing, so that's going to be interesting. Orca Slicer 2.3, fuzzy skin, the new fuzzy skin from Orca 2.3, uh, it's official version, and uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the video today, and I've covered everything, like I said I would, just with one click of a button, you too can have a multi-surface pattern on just about any print that you want to 3D print today. So, enjoy, like and subscribe, I'm Chris, 